Hi everyone, how's it going? Team here, and this is building products with JavaScript. Let's call it chapter two. So in the previous chapter, we've built a client server application that used React on the front end and Node with Express.js and all that other stuff on the back end. And you know, you guys really enjoyed the course and I enjoyed doing it. So we're gonna continue doing that. And um, taking from your feedback that you left on the last video where I asked you to tell me what you're interested in learning about, um, there seem to be two major areas that are interesting for most of you guys. Number one is desktop apps using Electron and number two is WebSockets. So we're gonna try to combine those two into something useful. So this time around, we're not just gonna go through the basics because you know, this time around, I'm actually not limited by uh, giving a course that is required for some other people. So I can actually go crazy. So here's a little description of what I wanna do. We're gonna build a desktop app using Electron, as I already said. So Electron JS is, you know, whatever we use for uh, Visual Studio Code, for example, right? It's built on Electron. Atom is built on Electron. Slack is built on Electron. Discord. There's a bunch of apps, and a lot of them are pretty good. So we're gonna do that. Uh, the app will be dealing with video content. So uh, here's the problem. Just to give you a bit of an insight, I thought I would do something useful that you know is going to be useful to me on day to day life, not just some artificial rest, crud app, whatever. So the thing is, uh, I watch a lot of videos, right? So I watch YouTube, as you can see here, here are like a bunch of my subscriptions. And uh, I use YouTube video deck for watching them because YouTube itself doesn't really provide a good way of tracking what I have watched what I have not, especially for uh, people like Jesse Cox and Total Biscuit who release a lot of things, you know, there's like this three hour podcast that I want to watch at some point, but I have to track which ones I watched, which ones I didn't, at what point did I stop watching it and so on and so forth. Uh, and this goes for a bunch of channels, like for example, Ave Me, I really enjoy watching how those guys uh, do their smithing stuff. But again, there's a bunch of videos that I haven't watched and it's a pain in the ass to track it manually and well, YouTube doesn't really give you a tools to do that. So hey. The next thing is Crunchyroll. Um, I watch a lot of anime and um, the problem here is that they don't really have a desktop client that can help me um, watch it while I'm programming. So for example, I tend to launch something in the middle of like, you know, the uh, Safari has this feature actually where you can uh, do a picture in picture thing. Let's, I never actually tried it, but uh, it only supposedly works for HTML5 videos. So. We're gonna go ahead and open something that is hopefully not too loud um, and uh, maybe try to uh, do a video in video. Let me just mute that thing. Um, and then picture in picture. Yeah, there you go. So this, this, this is the way, right? So this is what I wanna do. I wanna place it ab above my editor and then just watch whatever is happening there uh, with a side of my eye. Maybe, you know, something stupid, dumb that I don't really need to pay a lot of attention to. That's one point. The second point is that Crunchyroll actually still uses Flash Player, which is not particularly good. <laughs> so I would want to have a proper um, HTML5 player for it. We're going to see where we can do that. And of course, there's Netflix, you know, with all the TV shows and everything. Again, uh, they do have clients for all the mobile devices and everything, but there's no desktop client for it. So it's a bit of um, a bit disappointing again that you know you don't have one place where you can track it. And then the third point is that all of those are different services and I would actually want to see all of that in one interface. So we're going to build a desktop app that will do that. Um, the layouts for the app will be pretty simple. So we will have a series uh, catalog that will show us all the series in case of YouTube, it's going to be channels, but still called can call this uh, can be called series, right? It's going to be series view, which is the same as episode lists, or in case of YouTube, that can be YouTube channel list. Of course, there's going to be YouTube player that should be able to pop up and all that kind of stuff. Um, there should be our bookmarks with the progress tracking. So that's a good point. Um, let me quickly write this down. And of course, there's going to be search over the whatever sources we pick. So the idea is actually not to tie this into specific services like YouTube, Crunchyroll, Netflix, but to actually allow uh, writing input plugins. So I want to do something similar to, for example, what Kodi does, or um, it was called XBMC before, right? So, but Kodi and XBMC, even though it's a pretty great piece of software, it's, it's like, I don't know, like a Goliath, you know, it has so many features and so many things it can do that I did just too much. I want something simpler, smaller, 
and we just want to do some fun stuff. So what we need is um, subtitle support, for example, for Crunchyroll and for Netflix as well, because, you know, my wife is um, sometimes have problems with uh, listening to American accents. So we turn on subtitles for some shows. Uh, and the thing is that for most of the things, the subtitles are still provided as SRT or ASS uh, format. But for the web versions, we need this VTT thing. So we need to come up with some way to convert this. Now, uh, as I already mentioned, I want a picture in picture support for viewing it on top whenever I'm doing something uh, that, you know, I can be basically watching in parallel and background, whatever we call it. I want an offline viewing. So I know that, you know, for example, Netflix provides an offline viewing in their Android app. I have no idea why I cannot do that on my desktop. I want to do that. I like I pay for that service. Just to throw in uh, WebSockets in there, we're going to do like this is the part where I'm not completely uh, certain about. So we're either going to do a real time chat for the current episode. Basically, wherever you're watching the episode from, you're going to have a Twitch like layout with a chat on the right side. Uh, and you're going to see all the people chatting uh, and talking, whatever. Or alternatively, which uh, again uses, can be, use the WebSockets because we would need the timing support. Um, we can uh, use the SoundCloud-like time-based comments on the video. We're going to figure out what's, you know, what works better and what you guys think actually would be more fun to do um, along the way. And another thing I want to add is VPN support. So uh, as you might or might not know, I live in Germany and um, it's a bit painful to not be able to watch some of the series just because there is not enough licensing agreements with the local publishers. So I use VPN to watch Netflix, Crunchyroll, whatever, you know, it's it's just, I mean, I it's it's been like half a year or something uh, since the time they actually figured out the YouTube stuff and I started being able to watch all the videos there without having to rely on, on VPN. So I'm still dreaming about the day when the time comes when I can just go and watch the content I paid for, but at the moment I have to own VPN. And it's a bit of a pain to go to put like all my connections through it because, you know, gaming and VPN is not exactly uh, the line. So we're going to uh, bake in the VPN support into the app itself. Um, yeah, I think that's that's about it for my plans. So I'm going to be starting coding sometime this week, I guess. I'm going to be doing live streams for most of things I do. Um, so one idea is that I don't want to do live streams for each and every bit of code I do because I don't think it's going to be interesting on uh, how exactly I code the logic itself or what, you know, maybe um, additional plugins for YouTube, Crunchyroll, Netflix, whatever unless there are some very specific interesting problems that have to be solved. Uh, so I guess I'm going to do live streams for most important parts. And then there's going to be like short videos as the same format as, as the previous course. Uh, and yeah, hopefully we're going to make it quicker than eight months. <laughs> That's how long the first course talk. So let's, um, I took, uh, let's see how, how fast this goes. Um, let me know in the comments, what do you think? Maybe you have additional ideas. Maybe you think that this is, bad project and you have a better idea for desktop app, I'm open to suggestions, but this is basically the best I could come up with uh, for something useful, um, easy to implement and fun to implement. And that includes Electron and WebSockets. Uh, so yeah, um, I guess, you know, leave your comments to this video or Reddit or whatever you uh, leaving your comments for Twitter, Discord. I'm happy to read all of them. And uh, I see you next time. Bye guys.